just sucking on it. Got him. Look at that. That one feels like he might be just a little bit better. Well, I just got a little one, and sometimes what happens is you sit for quite a while like I have here this morning. And when I say quite a while, I mean I'm probably complaining. The reality of it is I haven't been out here that long. But I sat for a little bit here, and nothing was happening. Couldn't get a fish to bite. And then all of a sudden, boom, in comes a, uh, a little guy. And now that good sauger right there. And that's just an example of how all of a sudden, especially in these dark water situations, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about water clarity and how you catch fish in different water clarities. But here's the thing. All of a sudden, these fish are turning on. And one of the reasons for that is we're just getting that little bit of daylight. And it's just like us. You know, they're... They're just a little behind us a lot of days. That's great, sorry. We're going to keep him for dinner tonight. But they're just a little bit behind us. You know, we got up this morning and, and talked about, boy, we should get going. And you look around, and it was still dark out. And I said, you know, we're at, we're at an unfamiliar place. We're not somewhere I'm used to going. So I said, let's just slow down a little bit. We don't got to be in any big rush. I want to see where I'm going this first time out of, the, of this trip. A lot of times fish are the same way. They just need that little extra time to be able to see a little bit better. And as soon as they can, it's boom, boom, boom. I mean, I caught that little one. And then all of a sudden, boom, we get a good one. So that's how it can happen real often is all of a sudden that light will get right for them and things will take off. It's a great way to start right there. Let's see if we can find us a few more. Because you know what? A lot of times when it gets started like that, it'll just take off in a hurry and you don't want to miss it. Pretty chilly out here this morning, as you can tell. I mean, the holes still even start icing up a little bit, even with a heater right next to them. And there's not much you can do about it some days. It's just, just a little bit chilly. That's a great way to start, start a fishing trip right there. That one, <laughs> I don't think this one, <laughs> oh boy, it's so hard to tell. He feels pretty good, but there's there's just a pile of fish coming through under the house right now, and there's a little bit of a fire drill I got going on right now. I'm just trying to make sure I get them. Look at that. Another great sauger. That is a dynamite fish right there. Look at that. Quiver spoon's gone all the way down his mouth. You know, one of the things about fishing in this dark water that we're in, and we're on Lake of the Woods right now, and this is probably one of the you know, most well-known ice fishing destinations in the United States. And, and it's one of my favorites. You know, I love Red Lake. I, I love going out to Devil's Lake. I love getting over to Lake Winnebago. But this is why I love coming to Lake of the Woods. Because you get this combination of fish. You get saugers. You get walleyes. You can get perch. You can get pretty much anything. And the other thing you get about Lake of the Woods is you get so many different options. You know, if, if you're one of those guys that is in a situation where you don't own equipment, you can come up here, there's plowed roads, there's rental houses, there's everything under the sun. Or you can do what we're doing. I mean, you, you look at our situation here today, we snowmobiled. We're, we're up in the northwest angle right now. We're staying over at Flag Island Resort. and It's a great place to stay if you're ever going to make this trip. And, and I'll tell you what's really cool about it. We've just snowmobiled over here, you know, 10 miles from the resort. And we're sitting all by ourselves. I mean, you get that Canadian wilderness. And just eight miles back this way, back behind me here to our south, we can run right back into a whole ton of rental houses and a bunch of different resorts. Just a great, great opportunity to fish. But one of the things about Lake of the Woods is you have this darker water that I was talking about. And you need to really pay attention to a couple different things when you're fishing darker water. And number one, I think, is action. Because here's the thing, you need something that's going to grab their attention. Now, there's fish pouring through here right now, and I mean, they're just one after another. But here's the thing, they've got plenty to eat. They don't need to eat what I'm offering. So I want to offer something that really grabs their attention and makes them say, I want to eat that. And that's what's so great about this quiver spoon that I'm using. And I'm using the medium size today, and so I'm putting a lot of flash down there with this back because the back of this lure is plated. It's plated gold, so I'm putting flash down there. But then on the other side, I'm putting some bright color, and I'm actually using a glow color today. I'm using the glow pink, and it's grabbing their attention with all that action because when it goes down, it goes like this. 
So it goes color, flash, color, flash, and it grabs their attention from a distance. The other thing it's doing is displacing water as well because of the action. So you want to use a high action spoon that gives them color and flash and grabs their attention because otherwise in this dark water, they could be 10 yards that way and swim right past and never know anything's going on here if I were just fishing, say, a bobber setup and not doing something that's displacing water and giving color and flash. So keep that in mind. If you're going to come out and you're going to, you're going to really want to catch fish in dark, dirty water, you need to use action to your advantage. And if you do, you're going to catch fish and fill a pail as fast as we're getting it on today. And I mean, I'll tell you what, it's just one after another coming through here. We're grabbing their attention and catching them. I just dropped that down. You know, one thing about when you're using a spoon, this is a good fish. When you're using a spoon like this quiver spoon, one of the things that does happen, and this is why it triggers strikes though, is I lost sight of the spoon going down. And I've had this happen a couple times today. And what happens, boy, I hope this is a walleye. If it's a walleye, it's a good fish. What happens though is you lose sight of it. And what happened here, oh yeah, look at this eye. Look at that. <laughs> What a great fish. Look at that fish right there. But here's what's so cool about this. I didn't see this fish hit it. I didn't even see this fish on the screen. And here's why. Because of this spoon's flutter as it's going down, it got outside of the hole a little bit. And one of the things I'll do, and here's, here's exactly what I did with this fish right here. I stopped, I closed my bail, and I was just waiting for it to kind of swing back in to the transducer spot so that I could see it again. And all of a sudden there was this little, just little tug on the end of the line. Well, what happened was that lure was somewhere around me here. I can't tell you exactly where around me it was, but this walleye saw it coming and he smacked it. <laughs> I mean, look at that. He just grabbed it on the way down. I never even saw this whole thing happen. And that just goes to show you how much these fish absolutely love the action of that of that quiver spoon but there's something else i want to talk about i'm gonna let that fish go because you know what we're gonna get plenty of fish today maybe man that's just awesome right there let's let him go and then i want to talk to you about something else that i think makes a big big difference when you're fishing in dark water and i got it right underneath me here so i want to show it to you what i've been doing is i'm using a glow color today i'm using this glow pink quiver spoon but what I'm doing is I'm charging it up. And you can buy all kinds of different chargers, okay? You can see this one. When I turn that light on, I mean, you can see how bright it is. And I'm just glowing this spoon up. And I'm doing it every time before I let it back down. Now, there's a whole ton of these chargers. And, and let's face it, when you're checking out at the counter, usually you'll see these chargers. There's all kinds of them. There's, they're usually little round keychain type ones. This one's a different one. This is the Lindy Taser. Now, here's, here, here's the reality. This one's more expensive. All, all day long, you're going to pay more for this one than you are those cheap ones that you're seeing at the counter. But here's why. I've had this one for about three years. This one just clips right onto my, right onto my pant leg, and I keep it with me everywhere I go. And here's the thing about it. Day in and day out, it works. And I know it's going to work, whether it's cold, no matter, no matter what the situation. Like I say, I've had it for about three years. So when you're looking at different chargers to charge, you know, different charging lights to charge these lures up, look at this Lindy Taser because it might cost you a little more up front. But here's the thing. It's going to last for a long, long time. And it's going to charge it up enough that you're going to have a good, bright glow down there. And I think that makes a big, big difference in this dark water. That's why I carry this with me. I don't use it every day. I might not use it in clear water. But I always use it in low light, and I use it when I'm in dirty water like we are right now. I'll find another one on the fish. Here he comes. Jason is going to hit it right there. Oh, boy. That fish real, oh, there he's back. He'll hit it. There's no way, maybe I'm too high. Maybe I came too high, boy. He doesn't want to leave, though. There he got it. There, I finally got him. Three different times that fish came up. He feels like a good one, too. Three different times he came up, looked at it, went back down. And it just goes to show that sometimes you just keep moving that bait and you'll be able to make him bite. Feels like a pretty good fish. Oh yeah, look at this. Great way to wrap up our day. Oh, look at that. 
got him. <laughs> that fish, I was trying to pull my transducer out. Look at what happened. I hooked it in. I hooked the hook in the float for my sonar unit. And that walleye almost found a way to be gone. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great 15 inch fish to wrap up our day. I'll tell you what, these dirty water situations, you can still catch fish. It just comes down to fishing based on a lot of different factors. You know, base it on the light, pick the colors that are gonna be best, pick lures that make noise, have some vibration or have some extra action to them. And you can put fish like that and fish like we've caught all day long in the bucket pretty consistently throughout the day. That's an awesome day right there. Great way to wrap it up.